All right, we finished our logo in vector. We downloaded it as both a vector file and an SVG file, which stands for Scalable Vector Graphic. The problem with the vector file is it can only be opened in vector.com. We need the SVG file for it to be opened in other ways. And one of those ways is going to be to get it onto Canvas, because you can't load a vector file onto a website. So we have to rasterize it. And to do that, we're going to use PhotoP. And I'm going to create a new project. And just like we've done in the past, we want it to be 8 inches by 10 inches. This is for printing. You're going to have to print one of your logos. And it's going to be at studio resolution, 350 pixels per inch. 8 by 10 inches, 350 pixels per inch. Then you are going to open up your finished, not even open it up. You're going to take your finished SVG file, drag it in to PhotoP and it comes in as a smart object. And you, because it's a smart object and because it's a vector, you can scale this exactly the way you want and it will always be perfectly clean. It's showing us within our pixel architecture of eight by 10 inches at 350 pixels per inch, exactly how clean this image will be. So it's rasterizing it, but it's a smart vector or a smart object, so anytime we want to resize it with Control T in Photo P, it will be perfectly clean no matter what. This is what's brilliant about it. Because we made our 8x10 piece of paper, this is what's going to look what it's going to look like inside your black mat. So you lay it out, you decide how high it should be how low it should be, how centered it should be, how large it should be. Do not get too close to the sides because you don't want it to look really pinched, right? Generally, you want it centered. But generally, I want it a little bit smaller. So there's more on the sides. And I want it a little bit higher than center. That's because our eye tends to make things fall. But we can always accommodate for that as we tape it into the mat as well. So this is a good format. Okay, now we're gonna do a few things. One is if you turn off the background, you should see no white at all, right? That's because this is just a black shape vector. We did not use any other colors. If we did use other colors, we punched those colors out of the black shape. So you're gonna turn off your background and you're going to save this, export it as a PNG. And that's how you're gonna turn it in to Canvas. So SP232, Carl, assignment four, black vector transparent, because it has no background behind it. That's why it has to be a PNG. Save. Now remember your image size. And for some reason, mine got off of 8 by 10 inches. So I'm going to make it, again, 8 by 10 inches at 350 and say OK. Because that's going to be a lot cleaner than what it was before. <laughs> now, the beauty is I've already placed it. Because it's a smart object from a vector, this is now per perfectly clean, even though I screwed up the resolution somehow before. So now if I do export as a PNG, I want to keep that same name. I'm going to steal it. Because you need this to be print ready. We'll talk about that next class. Yeah, it should be around 2800 by 3500 pixels. There it is. Okay, that's going to come into your downloads. There it is. You're going to save it into your folder. I'm going to mark this. PNG that came in. Maybe I hadn't finished downloading yet. Let's do it this way. There we go. I'm going to mark that with orange. That's what's going to go into Canvas. And when we open it in preview, it should show on gray. Because remember, this has no background behind it. That's important for the next step for adding color. Then we can save it 
also as a PSD with the background turned off. So file, save more, save PSD. It's not going to be very much memory, even though it's high resolution, because it's just a single color vector layer. And then you save that PSD in your folder. But while that's saving, I'm going to go to where I post it in assignment four, right underneath my refined sketch. I'm going to edit it. And that was the goal for today using vector.com only. And now we can upload that PNG that I marked orange. And it's going to be huge, so I have to scale it down a little. And then what's going to come next to finish off this project is our final color version. And we can do this either colored in vector dot com or in photo p using layer styles which is my favorite way or both and we'll talk about that but because it's a smart object as long as we keep it as a smart object we can add layer styles to it that won't degrade the quality at all. We can add gradients, we can add fills, we can add drop shadows, we can add glows. That will be what's coming next class. So now we just want to get that really clean black shape vector. And then make sure you save your work. But as long as you've got that PSD, then you are golden because that's already got your vector smart object in it. And then I'll put it in the video just because it's a good thing to know. If we open up your SVG in Adobe Illustrator, which you have on these computers, we can also export it as what's called an EPS file. And an EPS file is to me the most useful type of vector file. It's usually what vendors want. And it's why Illustrator Illustrator is a, an Illustrator type of portable vector format. And now you'll see under layers, all your different things are there. And then I'm going to say file, save as, onto my computer, the SVG into what's called an Illustrator EPS. And I'm also going to save it that way. And that's another way that works well with Photoshop, with other programs. But that's optional. So I want you to know that SVG and EPS are both vector formats that need to be rasterized in order to go online. All right, that's everything.